I'm Erica, National Account Manager for Skimmer Billing. I also have Jasmine with me today. She is Skimmer's onboarding specialist. We're here to take you through zero to Skimmer Billing, how to set up Skimmer Billing in under 20 minutes. Many of you have been with Skimmer for some time, you're power users and know all the ins and outs, and we're here to ensure you're feeling just as confident using Skimmer Billing. Skimmer Billing is designed to give you a faster, more enjoyable billing experience, a one-stop shop to run your entire business using one tool made specifically for pool pros. Skimmer can accommodate multiple service models per stop, per month, with chems, plus chems. So no matter your model, we have the solution for you. To get us started, Jasmine is gonna walk us through the setup steps. Uh, much of this you may have already done in your account, given that you're an existing Skimmer Pro, but we'll cover all the steps anyways to make sure you're ready and off to a better billing experience. Hi, guys. So, Erica, the very first thing that you want to do when you're setting up for Skimmer Billing is to make sure that you set up your Stripe account. And it takes a few minutes. It's not hard at all. So we're going to go into your settings. Okay. And then we're going to go into payments. If you have not connected to Stripe through Skimmer before, you will see a blue setup payments button near the top of the screen. Start by clicking this button. Then enter the password that the owner uses to log into Skimmer. You'll then enter your phone number and email address. A test code will be sent to the phone number that was provided in the next step. Enter the code, then answer the questions about your business. Enter the website for your business. If you don't have a website, you can link it to a social media profile or provide a description of your business, or you can simply enter getskimmer.com. Enter the bank account information for the account in which you'd like to receive payments. This can be changed later if your payment details change. Confirm that the details you entered are correct, then click Agree and Submit. Stripe setup is now complete. You will be redirected back to Skimmer. In most cases, the Stripe account will be ready to process in just a few moments. However, some accounts may take up to two days to be approved. The status of your Stripe application will be shown on this page. Prior to seeing Enabled, you should see a status of Pending. Once you see Enabled, you're ready to go. If you ever need to edit your Stripe account details, such as your bank account, come back to this page and click on the Enabled button. So here I'm connecting to what exactly, Jasmine? So you're connecting to Stripe, which is our merchant for accepting payments. So ACH payments, credit card payments, debit card payments. If your company is going to be accepting those type of payments, this is what we're going to go through, which is Stripe. Um, it's important to remember that only the owner, whoever's listed as the owner, can set this process up. Okay. And another point is... If you as the pro have any questions about a payment, uh, a dispute, in general, anything related to your money, you do not have to go to Stripe. You come directly to Skimmer. We are your primary point of contact. If needed, we will contact Stripe on your behalf. So no need to worry um, about support. You'll get the same support you've grown to learn and love with Skimmer Billing as you've had with Skimmer thus far. All righty, and then what? What do I do after I've connected? I'm ready to take payments. Do I just start or what do I do first? So you wanna make sure that your taxes, your rates, all those things are set up. So the easiest one that we can go through right now is let's go into our customers tab and let's make sure that all our customers have a rate and a rate type attached to them. So an easy way to look at this, instead of having to click into every customer's profile, let's look on the right side. You should see a green button that says service rates. Okay. All right. Awesome. So if we're looking at this, I see that all your customers have a rate and a rate type. So it looks like all your customers are per stop with chemicals. Now, if a customer doesn't have this set up yet, we want to make sure that we show them um, how to do it fast in bulk. Okay. So if I wanted to change these first five customers right here, mm -hmm. I'll select them, hit the 
conveniently labeled bulk update icon. Right. And then you can change any of those categories. All righty. And now all those customers that you just chose are both updated. So you don't have to do it one by one by one. Very nice. Super convenient. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I noticed that you did change some of those to per stop per month plus chemicals. So okay. that means that we're charging our customers for the chemicals, including um, aside from the service. So dosages. We want to make sure that those prices are set in our settings. Okay. So settings, readings, and dosages. Mm -hmm. All right. So to look, to check that out, uh, let's click on tabs, for example. Click on that little edit button. Okay. All right. So I see a cost and I see a price. The price is what I'm going to charge for that tab. So luckily you already have that price in there okay. and you have that can include with service. Mm -hmm. Erica, do you know what can include with service means? This means that this tab can be included with my service and I am not charging for it. Right. So this is going to help us since you have customers that are with chemicals but you also have customers that are plus chemicals. What this button helps us do, it separates the two. So the customers that are plus chemicals get charged for the tabs. The customers that are with chemicals don't get charged for tabs. Awesome. Okay. So it's okay that I leave this checked on so that mm -hmm. it includes uh, my customers that are with chems, correct? But this correct. will get overridden for my customers that are plus chems that I do want to charge for. Correct. Okay. And also to confirm, the cost is what it costs me as a business to purchase this tab. And the price is what I am selling this tab for to my customer, to the pool owner. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. So once I save this, I need to make sure to go through and do it for my other chemicals. For any chemicals. Yep. Okay. Correct. Perfect. Awesome. So any business that has um, products, it's important to keep those in your product list. So let's look at your product list. Settings, products. Okay. So these are common items that you install on a regular basis. So we always suggest, you know, O-rings, pump baskets, skimmer baskets, things that on the regular basis. Add these to your product list so you can charge them and mark them as installed from the app so you don't have to go back and remember, did I leave this at a customer's house at the end of the month? Saves you that headache. Okay, so I come in here, I will type in O-ring, optional description, put it in a category if I'd like. Mm -hmm. Price, let's just call this 25 bucks to keep it simple, whether or not it's taxable. Right. <clears throat> awesome. So now when I am running a route stop or a work order, I mark this product as installed and it will then appear on that, on the invoice for that route stop and or work order. Correct. Okay. Great. All right. Let's, um, we can go and look into work order types for the companies that do repair or service calls, any any work order type, we want to make sure that those settings are, are ready to go for when we take it through that invoice generator. Okay, so settings, work order types already. Okay, so these are all the work order types that you have um, listed in your company. So let's click edit on one, just choose one. And what we want to focus on is if we scroll down, we can look at the line item defaults for skimmer invoices. OK. 
okay? So it'll give you options on how you want these work orders to be invoiced and how you want them to display on the invoice. Okay. So here I'm seeing line item, leave blank to use work order type name. Got it. So if I leave it blank on my invoices, it's going to default to service call, correct? Correct. Okay, great. Otherwise, I write in whatever I want, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Line item description, what's that? So this is what's going to show up as a... Um... So you'll have the service and then you'll have the description. Okay, gotcha. So leave blank if I want to fill it in myself when I'm creating the invoice or default work needed, which I saw up here is this section mm -hmm. or default to work performed. When would I be entering the work performed? So this is what gets filled out when your tech is out in the field and he puts any work that was performed in that section, that's what's gonna come over into the invoice. Okay, got it. What if my tech has really bad spelling or grammatical issues? Is that how it's gonna appear on the invoice or will I have a chance to clean it up for them? You'll have a chance to clean it up. Um, once that invoice is generated, you can go in and edit an invoice. Okay, amazing. And then this seems self-explanatory, include the service date that I went out to do the work order or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Line item price, use price from work order. So I'm assuming that means up here, the default price? Yep. Okay, so same concept here, the labor cost, what it cost me to pay my tech to send him out to do this versus price, what I'm charging my customer, my pool owner to go out to do right. it. Okay. That will show up in the invoice, correct? Gotcha. So if I select use price from work order, it will have that price. If I leave it blank, then I fill in my own? Yes, correct. Gotcha. And then whether or not this is taxable. Awesome. Straightforward from there. And then I'm assuming right up here where it says this work needs to be invoiced, that definitely has to be checked. Correct. Yes. You'll want to make sure that's checked. Um, so it takes it into the invoice generator because if not, you're going to generate invoices and that one won't be in there. Okay. Very important. This mm -hmm. work needs to be invoiced. Make sure it's yes. checked mm -hmm. on it. Okay, great. Easy enough. Okay. So moving on, let's go into your invoice settings. Okay. So settings. Invoicing, gotcha. Okay, this is how you want your invoices to be numbered, when you want the payment to be due, and this is gonna be the default messaging that's gonna be on your invoice. Okay, so when I get started with Skimmer Billing, I can set this to one, I can set this to a thousand, and then mm -hmm. it'll numerically increase from there. Correct, yep, it'll go up from there, and then you set, how how far apart you want your those payments to be due. Okay, let's do due upon receipt so I make sure I get paid. Right. Okay. And then default pool service line item name. So whatever I put here is what will be on my invoices for my service rate. Right. For your routine regular service. Yep. Okay. And then a description if I want. Gotcha. Okay, great. Moving on, moving on. Okay, so we go into taxable defaults. If you charge taxes for your routine services, you want to make sure that default pool service tax service to taxable is checked. Okay. And then if you're anything else that needs to be taxable, just make sure you select those boxes. Okay. And will the checking these boxes, will it automatically add the tax or do I still need to set up my taxes? So we're still going to set up our tax groups. Okay, great. So we'll do that next. Gotcha. All righty. Billing info, pretty straightforward. Company name, address, and invoice email settings. All straightforward. What happens, Jasmine? What is the BCC email here? What it, what 
What, what does that mean? So that's going to be your blind carbon copy. So this means when your customer gets an invoice, you get a copy of that invoice to whatever email you put into that BCC. Okay, understood. Mm -hmm. And this is all customizable here, but I can default it to the invoice number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Oh, and I can upload my logo. Beautiful. Yep, makes it look more professional. Definitely. Okay, great, what's next? So we were just talking about tax groups. So let's go into settings and we're going to go into taxes. All right. Okay. So on the left side, you see tax rates. And then on the right side, we see tax groups. Mm -hmm. Very easy to set up. So if you have a tax rate, you can add a rate. We have some in here for you already. Let me add a new one here. Let's say okay. this is Los Angeles County. And the tax rate is 8%. All right. Okay. So once you save that, you can put it into a tax group. So go into add group. Okay. So now if you charge just state tax and Los Angeles County tax, you can select those two and give it a name. You can, you can create groups out of your tax rates. Gotcha. But what if I, okay, so this will allow me to combine tax rates and apply to a specific set of customers. Correct. What if I just have, I only charge LA County tax rate. Do I still need to create a tax group or is creating a tax rate for LA County enough? You'll still want to create a tax group. Okay, so I'll come in here, I'll let LA County resident. Okay. Awesome. So from here, now we have three different tax groups. So if we're charging taxes for our customers, where we were in our customers tab, when we went to service rates. Customers, service rates. If you notice on the right side, we have a sales tax group. Gotcha. Okay, so I can either one by one select the new rate or like you showed me before, update these in bulk. Yep. Saves you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. All righty, we're on a roll, what's next? Okay, so the next one we wanna look at is settings and we're gonna go into payments. Okay. So this is gonna be, if you want to receive your, your customer to receive the receipts once they've paid, you'll wanna to toggle this feature on. And it's just gonna show you the settings of what's gonna show up on that receipt. Okay, so the from name, I could put my pool name, on oh, my pool name, I'm sorry. The from, the from name field, more than likely I'll put my business name, not my personal mm -hmm. name, so that right. it's reflective, okay? This is cool, so I can put in the email address that it will appear to my customer. To be coming from. Mm -hmm. Amazing, so it'll definitely feel personalized, like it's coming mm -hmm. through from the business. Right. Okay, and then what is this BCC email field? How is this different from the invoice mm -hmm settings field that you showed me? So this is going to be different because this is you receiving a receipt. So anytime a receipt is sent out, you will also get the receipt. Ah, I see. Gotcha. And is this, so this was, is letting me know that my customer paid, essentially. I can get an email every time my customer pays to know that that's come through. Correct. Yes. Awesome. Okay. That is important. I want to know when my money is here. Awesome. So those are all the settings that we wanted to make sure are set up so that we're ready to go to our invoice generator.